Hey, it's Rye Myers, your Broadway and entertainment BFF, and you're watching my live digital talk show series, Live with Rye. So hey, before we begin, I have a huge favor to ask of you. Do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, smash that subscribe button, and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you never miss an episode of Live with Rye and see all the exciting content that I post. And hey, one more thing, scrolling across the bottom of your screen, you'll see ryethenewsguy.com slash donate. I love being able to bring you all the exciting content from the entertainment, Broadway, pop culture world with some of the best people in the industry focused on positive, good, and exciting news. But I can't do it without your help. So if you were so inclined, would love if you'd head to ridethenewsguy.com slash donate to support. You can also scan this QR code if you're on a desktop. It'll take you to the website as well. But it will be scrolling throughout the bottom of the screen throughout the show. So you can head there as well. And I would really appreciate if uh, you were able to support. And with that, help me welcome my very special guest, Justin Mortaliti. Hey, Justin. Hey, Rai. How's it going, buddy? I'm good. It's going well, thanks. I, I got the last name right. You sure did. OK. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, been, it's been a lifelong battle for me. <laughs> I, I totally understand. I, I always, like, I know how, I know what it's like to have a last name sort of butchered. I mean, for me, it's more spelling wise, because I'm M-Y-E-R-S. I always get an M-E-Y, so I always try to be respectful with last names. Oh, always, yeah. Always oh, like, I get everything, but mostly when I was growing up, it was tortellini. Oh. I'm a macaroni. It's fine. I'm an Italian from Jersey. That's how it uh, is. <laughs> that's funny. So how have you been doing? How have you been holding up during uh, these long, almost now, 13 and a half months um, since quarantine? How have you been holding up and doing? Shoo. You know, it's it's been wild. It's been a wild ride. There's been a lot of creativity, a lot of writing and music creation getting done, a lot of um, fun things with other artists, friends, other Broadway folk who are unemployed at the moment. A lot of self-tape auditions. I did a couple TV shows this year, which was really, I was really lucky to be able to work a little bit. Um, so that was cool. And then, you know, there's the down times where you're feeling sad and you're feeling stuck and those are okay too. So it's been a mix of all. Yeah, the, 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 those down times are always the hardest, but um, for all of us. But yeah, weren't was it recently? Weren't it? Was it Law and Order, right? That you recently or CSI? One of those you were on NCIS New Orleans. Okay, NCIS uh, okay. was just a month ago or two months ago, and then at the end of last year, I was on a show called Manhunt, which is on CBS, yeah. and then it was on Netflix. And we did. Uh, I was in Pride and Prejudice, the musical, playing Mr. Darcy, which we did just before the shutdown. And so that was one of the first streaming things that they put up, I, I believe is on Amazon now, so. Okay, I remember hearing about that, yes, but I remember recently, okay, NCIS, that you, yeah, you had, you were playing the, uh, you, you were playing a criminal, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was playing a crazy. That's so cool. Well, I'm glad you at least have gotten some work, you know, out of this. That's, that's always, it's one positive and great that you've been able to write and collaborate. Uh, there's been so much creation and creativity um, out of this time. And I really am excited to see moving forward what comes out of this, because I think some of the best art from people is going to come out of this time. Yeah, I think it's people saw that it's important to find the blessings in, in the time, find the light in the dark. <laughs> and you know, for a lot of us in, in this community, especially it's go, 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 go. It's a rat race of a life, you know? you're consistently working or trying to find the next job or, and a lot of times the creative ideas you have keep stacking up, the list gets longer and longer, which creates anxiety and stress because you want to get to it. And to sort of have the weight lifted of the industry off your shoulders for a second and to be able to focus on that creative list and kind of tick things off feels really good creatively and and release wise and um also to have the time to do it is sort of the blessing and a lot of artists have taken advantage of that time if they could and uh yeah so i'm excited too to see what comes out after this is all over that's wonderful to hear uh, so let's talk about your uh exciting new musical the ladies man where did the inspiration come from to write the ladies man where, where sort of take us back to the beginning yeah, I mean, the ladies, man. Well, it's, <laughs> it's loosely based on my growing up as a gay kid in New Jersey in an extremely religious Catholic Italian family, mm -hmm. um, which I'm sure a lot of people <laughs> have shared growing up gay in an extremely religious family. It doesn't have to be Italian, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, in the title, the ladies, man, came from... I, 
well, essentially musical is about gay shame and the repercussions of gay shame and the different way it acts out in our in our lives and affects us in our lives, it affects our families and relationships and most importantly, our, our, our own self-love. Um, and it's about how the 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 tiny microaggressions that sort of add to the gay shame, and um, the title comes from one of those microaggressions. When I was young, I had a lot of friends who were girls. I was always more comfortable with with the ladies, and uh, I was thought to be a ladies' man because of that. <laughs> uh, and also, you know, some shame was placed upon me, and and a little bit of bullying, and a little bit of shame from people I'm closest with about getting more guy friends. And so when I set out to write this musical, it was gonna initially be about all the all the women in my life who have sort of been there for me. And, and, and then it started branching out to being more about something else. Um, it was initially gonna be about honoring these, these ladies and it sort of became this, this whole other thing. Um, Cause I found the message to be really important. You know, I, I spent a lot of my years in LA bartending in West Hollywood at a gay bar called The Abbey. And um, I saw a lot of stuff. Can I curse? <laughs> no? Yep. Yes, you can. <laughs> I saw a lot of shit. I saw a lot of damage and a lot of addiction and a lot of um, issues in the community. And as time goes on, you know, you start to see people pop up on Facebook who you've lost to suicide um, or drugs or alcohol. And as someone who sort of worked my way through this shame and it's been lucky enough to have a great support team of friends and family around me um, to sort of heal the wounds, uh, I thought it was important to sort of tell the story, tell the story of what this, this religious idea can do to people, specifically gay people. Um, and so I set out to write it and the funny thing was, I, I I was in LA trying to get a record deal for years. You know, I was <laughs> I was trying to be a pop star, and I was recording and writing and um, shooting for the stars. You know, and so when I started writing this script, I thought it was going to be a screenplay. And as I was writing it, I was like, "Ooh, this song that I wrote when I was going through this kind of fits in right here in the story." Um, Oh my gosh, and then this one fits in here, and this one fits in here. So I got together with my writing partner, whose name is Shannon. We used to have a pop duo called Steffi and Pepper. <laughs> uh, check out our single, Big Hair. <laughs> and, you know, we sort of put our minds together. We wrote new material, uh, used some of my material, um, some of her material. There's a lot of, there's a few female lead characters in this show, and she sort of became a voice for them, a lot of her songs. It's funny with music, you might be writing about something specific yeah. and then it fits right in with something else. Mm -hmm. um, I wrote a song called The Fall and I released it a while back and someone wrote me a message and was like, oh my God, this is about my divorce and this really speaks to my heart and I'm really you know, affected by this. And I was like, well, I wrote it about coming out, but like rad. And that's the cool thing about songwriting and songs and art is people can um, digest it in their own way and relate to it in their own way. So anyway, her songs began fitting into some of the female characters, female voices in our show. Um, and so it became this pop rock musical with, you know, songs that could be on the radio, <laughs> you know? And that's the dream, that's the dream is to have a musical that can hit the top 40 in the billboard charts and the album can be released like an album and uh, with a bunch of pop songs sung by, you know, amazing Broadway voices. I, I, I absolutely, I absolutely love. I absolutely love. Oops, oops. <laughs> I have. A, I and now you're muted. I'll just take the microphone out. There you go. Gotta love. Gotta love this technology. Um, mm -hmm. that's wonderful to hear. Um, you know, I hope that we can have this album be one of those ones that are played. Uh, you know, on the radio. I do really love the music. It is pop rock, and I think it's special the way that you've created this musical to reflect on your life and you know i think it'll help a lot of people and it's you know i'm so sorry that you went through that you know i can relate to you know some of that especially being nine years in a catholic school um you know growing up catholic and uh i can understand that um you know i was 
the sort of the poster child of what you shouldn't be in a Catholic school, gay, parents divorced, all that stuff. So, you know, I understand uh, the shame and stuff, but I am glad that you've been able to put all of that into your music and into, um, into this work. And I, I know it's going to just inspire so many people. Thank you. I really hope so. I mean, it's, it's so important and it's important now, you know, people, people are dying. Yeah. You know, this is an epidemic, gay shame. And it's, it's something we're starting to talk about more mainstream now, you know, with conversion therapy and all. And we think of conversion therapy as something, you know, you get sent away to a camp <laughs> where you pray the gay away um, when you're a kid and, and that extreme version of it, which is just awful and, and abusive. But in a way, a lot of us are in conversion therapy our whole lives through these microaggressions, you know, being told that things are mom and dad, things are man and woman, things are, you know, being raised in the straight world. Um, you know, and especially, you know, I was someone growing up who had a lot of friends who sort of fit in, who was able to blend in. And when I started to discover these feelings inside me, you know, around puberty time that I was different and realizing that I knew all along that I was different since I was a kid, I, I was able to sort of put them away and, and hide them. Mm -hmm. But for a lot of kids who are just different and, and bullied, and beat up and teased and mocked. And then they go to church and they're expecting to say like, oh, I'm safe here. Like, please, you know, they look up to these priests as like God, as Jesus. And then the priest is up there saying that homosexuality is a mortal sin and that you will go to hell and that it is wrong and sinful. You know, so many of these kids killed themselves, are killing themselves. And something has to be done if we can't stop if we can't go in those churches and stop them from doing that because which is abuse and conversion therapy then we must create art we must speak and tell our stories so that people can find them on on stuff like this on youtube and and realize that they are amazing and perfect and you know hopefully they can find a way to love themselves at a younger age it took me you know decades to find that love for myself and and you know, I'm trying to do my part with this show. Well, you definitely, well, you, you definitely, you definitely, definitely are. are. <laughs> Technical <laughs> issues. <laughs> I have had the, there we go. Okay, I've never had this happen before. Um, you know, that's I think one of the hardest things too um, for LGBT uh, individuals is you know that grow up in a religious household that you know that, and why I think a lot of them unfortunately get away from faith and lose hope because you know you're told that you know you're not good enough that what you're doing is a sin and uh you know it's tough to hear and if you don't if you aren't some people aren't strong enough to um, take that on their own and be able to process it and it's really sad that um to see to see that you know i'm somebody who even though the experiences that i had i'm still i believe in uh, jesus and god and i'm still Christ christian i'm not actively practicing but you know it's helped me and it's sad to see that um, a religion which is supposed to help people mm -hmm. really, um, sometimes ends up hurting them. And that's, uh, it's tough to see. Yeah. And the biggest trick is that they believe they're doing good. They believe they're doing the right thing. And that by be, it's like tough love by giving this tough love and they are loving and they are helping to guide people towards the light. You know what I mean? It's, it's a brainwash thing. It's really twisted. And, you know, they talk about like devil comes like a wolf in sheep's clothing, you know, that truly is the definition of it. Them believing they're doing good when they're doing such harm, such harm to people. Um, and in the way shame comes out of people, the way shame is reflected in people's lives, it creates harm all around. It branches out, you know, and it all stems from this thing. It's like the trickle down effect. The blood is on their hands. Really, truly. Um Yes. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's really it's it's so uh it's so sad. And you know, one of the things that's interesting, it says in the description of the musical um on the website, which I love is this is a story about the devastating effect that a shaming religion and belief system can have on a person and a family and how the love uh of friendship and a return to faith can heal and save. This is powerful. Um so 
did you uh, find love and acceptance through friends during this time? And how did you land back at faith or did you land back at faith um, during uh, through at the end? Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a journey. Life is a journey and it keeps going, you know? So yeah. I'm still navigating my own journey. We all are. Um, and it's important to say that this musical and this story and what I'm trying to get across is not an attack on religion and faith. Um, if anything, it shows the difference between faith and religion, um, an organized religion and sort of a pack mentality of we are the only way, we are right, we are the right religion, you know? It's like a sports team. You know, people get with like sports, you know, when their team is winning, they'll like tear up the town, flip cars and like, especially in Philly. <laughs> Shout out to Philly. I'm from that area, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, it becomes that with religion. It becomes that like with politics, like we saw in this last year, the passion people have for what they believe. You know, even when it's dead wrong and clearly wrong, they'll believe it with such passion. And it's similar with religion, it's that group mentality. Faith is separate and my faith has always been intact, you know? Um, and I sort of had to, to discover that, the PTSD that growing up in that religion kind of placed upon me is extreme. And you, as you work your way through that, you know, I thought I lost my faith for a while. I wanted nothing to do with it, but you know, my relationship with God and whatever God is, I think is pretty great still. <laughs> and that's the thing is God is so many different things to so many different people and so many different religions and nobody's right. We don't have the answer, you know, and we won't until we leave this earth, <laughs> you know? So you, you just believe God as some, some kind of energy, something good and something that leads you and something to have faith in. Um, and that's sort of what this show is. The lead character goes through a lot of stuff and, uh, you know, will he find, be saved through his faith? Like, tune in to find out. But along the way, you know, we talk a lot in the gay community about your chosen family. You hear a lot about it on RuPaul's Drag Race. They talk about the chosen family um, and the importance of it. The importance of these people and, uh, how they save you, how they teach you to love and, and teach you to love yourself again. Um, and yes, I do have some amazing friends and chosen family members in my life who have saved me along the way, as we all do. I think that that's so beautiful and special. And I, I agree with everything you've said. You know, back in December, you actually had the Ladies' Man um, premiere a few uh, excerpts at the New York Theater Barn's uh, new work series, which was really cool. Tell me about that experience and what it was like to be a part of that. You had some great people um, a part of that production as well. What was that like? Yeah, it was really cool. I mean, over the years, I've been writing this for eight years and the music for even longer, but um, I've had some readings. I've had three readings over the years with some Broadway colleagues and, uh, you know, you, where you learn and you kind of hear it out loud and you make some adjustments and rewrites. But this was the first time I was sort of putting it out there for the public. Mm -hmm. So it was scary. I was nervous, especially because it's semi-autobiographical. There's part of, parts of my own life and experience in it. Mm -hmm. um, it's not completely autobiographical. You know, I need to be clear about that because, you know, people want it. But it's, it's parts, you know. And <laughs> to put that out there, it's and putting any of your songwriting out there and, and stuff is scary to begin with, but then, you know, having bits of your life in there as well, it's nerve wracking. So it was thrilling, it was exciting, it was scary, and it was a lot of work. <laughs> you know, being everyone in quarantine, I had to get people together, uh, friends, people who I didn't know, who I met through my agent, um, you know, sort of had to reach out, have them check out the material, see if they want to be involved. And then everyone had to sort of shoot their parts on their own, like a self tape for an audition, you know, singing along in your headphones. And then I had to um, work in the editing room and I was kind of piecing it together. I hired an editor for one of the numbers because it was so many cast members that I was like, I can't possibly take this on. It'll take me a year. <laughs> so I hired someone to help me with that. And the other one I sort of did on my own uh, and 
you know, just got creative with the shooting of it and everyone turned in really awesome performances. People were down, people were down to help because, you know, everyone's wanting to get creative and sort of out of work. So that was exciting to have people so excited about it. And then, you know, once they got involved saying how much they love this, the song and the, the, what we were singing about, what the scenes were about, you know, and happy to be a part of it. So it was really great. And then when we aired it at New York Theater Barn, they did like a live stream. The response was like outstanding. I was so pumped, so pumped, you know, near tears, really excited. And it really fueled me and gave me the fuel to keep pushing forward with this thing. Because essentially at this point, I just need, you know, you need the producers. Right. Exactly. You need someone to come in and say, this story is important. This music is cool. Let's get this thing on stage, you know? No, I agree. And it was, it was really popular. And that was really exciting to see uh, as well from somebody watching it. Was it the first time that you had really sort of put it out there for people to, to see and to hear um, was, was back in December at this, uh, at the New York theater barn? Yeah, it was, it was. And I, it was exciting because now they're up, they're up on YouTube. One of the songs is called I Want Your Love and the other one's called If You Are Wrong. And these performances are on YouTube so people can check them out if they search the ladies man and those titles. And the song um, If You Are Wrong, I released at the same time on iTunes as a single to sort of drum up some buzz and get people excited about the show. Um, that's something I hope to do more because like I said, I see these songs as, you know, pop songs, radio friendly pop songs, rock songs that could, Hit the billboard charts, God willing. <laughs> so, you know, I hope to keep releasing them and, and see what happens and eventually get someone excited to get the show on the stage, you know. Is that is that sort of what your future plan is sort of next for it? Is uh, you hope to have it, you know, be put on stage next? And what is what are sort of the next steps that you hope to to have to do with it? Yeah, you know, I the dream is to get it out there to get it out there as soon as possible to start saving lives, you know? Any material like this, any material that comes out the, uh, on Netflix or on the stage or anywhere is going to save someone's life. They're going to watch it, they're gonna see themselves in a character. And sometimes when you love a character on stage, when you have love for a character on stage and you see yourself reflected in that character, you begin to love yourself. And that's what some of these kids need, not even kids, adults, you know, grown men and women, need to find that love for themselves, need to love themselves. And my hope is that some of them will see this and, and be helped, you know? So as soon as possible, in any way possible, you know, I see this, um, it's, it's dark and it's edgy, the musical. Um, it's definitely not for children, it's adult themed. And I didn't wanna hold back. I didn't wanna make it appropriate for, for Broadway. I didn't wanna make it PG in its language, you know? It's gritty. I'm from New Jersey. We curse, <laughs> you know, and so it's it, there's sex, which is part of life. Um, and there's there's the whole song. I want your love is about losing your virginity as a teenager and the traumatic experience of forcing yourself to do something as a gay person with a woman. You know, I, I had a conversation with some of my straight friends. and I was trying to you know, we we're talking about growing up and I was like, imagine forcing yourself to be with a guy when you're 16, when you're young and you're starting to develop these, these hormones and feelings and forcing yourself to be with a guy, have sex with a guy because that's what you think is right. And these guys were like, Oh, Oh, I never thought of it like that. That would be traumatic. I'm like, yeah, that's what so many gay people go through, you know, and we don't talk about that trauma no. and how that continues on in your life. Um, not to mention the trauma of the people, the women, you know? Yeah. It's so, so uh, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, so it's edgy and it's dark and it's, I, I like to say it's like, you, you watch that show Euphoria on HBO? I have not yet, but I have, I've heard it. It sounds, I've heard it. it. It does sound good. Yeah. It's like if Euphoria was a musical, you know, it's, it's, it's like that. And it's very no holds back, no holds barred, not holding back. <laughs> Um, so yeah, what, what was the original question? I don't know. <laughs> sort of the future plans though. So. Yeah. So, oh, so yeah. So I, if someone wanted to make this a mini series, the, 
you know, it's it's written for the stage, but it could be easily adapted for the screen. Um, or if a Broadway producer wants to pick it up and get it moving, get it off Broadway, get it at a regional theater, uh, start developing it, like that's the dream, just to get it out there. I love that. And I cannot wait to see what the future plans are for this. What did you learn about yourself while writing The Ladies' Man? Did you, what did you learn about yourself as an artist, as a creative? Hmm. It was a lot of self-healing, honestly, mm -hmm. writing it and um, having to write from specific people's point of view in my life and sort of get into their head um, and not see any person as villains, but sort of understand them and see the villain as this idea, mm -hmm. this idea of um, this religious idea of being gay, being a sin, that being the villain. Um, and everyone else being victims of this idea. So I really, I worked through a lot of my anger um, while writing this and really learned to love myself even more. So it was a lot of self healing. And creatively, it was, it was a lot of learning to be confident with myself, learning to say, I, I do have something to say and I'm able to say it. You know, a lot, a lot of times in the beginning, it was like, who am I? I have never written a play. Who am I to sit down and say that I'm a writer? You know, and then you have to say to yourself, I've been writing songs since I was a kid. Like I am a writer. Uh, writing a script is just a, an extension of that, you know, and I've studied theater my whole life. I've been to school like Justin, you know what you're doing. So it was sort of like breaking through that wall and finding your confidence and saying, I'm an artist. I have something to say and I can do this. Um, and then along the journey, having these nerve wracking readings, putting it in front of your, you know, Broadway friends and colleagues for the first time and having such positive support and feedback about it, you know, fuels you to keep going. Let's you say, I have something here, you know? Yeah. Um, I reached out, one of the biggest things that happened is I reached out to uh, someone who was a regular uh, at the bar I worked at in LA, who's a big, big Hollywood agent. And this person sent it to the head of their New York theatrical department to sort of have a look. And that guy gave me a call and he was like, you really have something here. I enjoyed it so much. I'm so excited for the show. Please keep in touch and let me know, you know, what's happening with it um, as you move along. And just that, just that he didn't have to read it. He didn't have to call me and say these things, but just hearing that from someone so high, like so high up in the industry put, you know, gave me wings, gave me fuel for the tank. You know, it really made me say, okay, I'm doing this thing. Yeah, when you have something like that, when that happens, it's like, whoa, that, you know, it, it feels yeah. you know, it's wonderful that uh, you've had that support at, and, and that you've realized you can do this because you can, no matter who you are, you know, uh, nobody, I, I forget that quote, but about gives you the permission to create, only you have that, you know, the permission to create and you know nobody gives you that you can do it yourself and so i'm glad that you've taken that and run with it thank you it is yeah it is about giving yourself permission and saying i'm doing this you know because i have to kind of yeah that's because I, sur I survived it and i don't know how but i did and you know i want others to as well we have to yes yes we do and what do you hope the message um, what do you hope that young LGBT people will take away from this musical and also allies as well, be it parents or friends um, to take away from this, uh, from the lady, from the ladies man? Well, I hope, first of all, allies, I hope that they see um, their importance in our lives and how important their voice is. Um, I hope unallies, what's the opposite of an ally? <laughs> Enemy. <laughs> Enemies, I hope the other side can see this and maybe in a fun musical entertainment sort of way, just like any piece that's written for stage or screen about the gay experience um, can sort of change their mind or open their hearts or see things in a different way or have some understanding or compassion or empathy for a story that is not theirs. Um, and so I also hope to change hearts in that way. and as far as our LGBTQ community, um, I hope, like I said, that they see themselves reflected on stage 
that they say, I know what that is. I know what that feels like, that they learn something, that they say, oh my God, that is gay shame. That is what I'm doing in my life. How can I change this? How can I be okay? Um, to have sort of an anthem, to have a song to blast and, and sing along with when they're feeling, you know, when they're in the darkness, to something that could help pull them out, something that can give them courage to keep going. Courage to dream and then strength to make that dream happen. And the dream being live a full life, live a happy life, you know? That's it, that's my hope. I I love that and I I know it's gonna do just that. I mean, I I know when I was younger, you know, having something to listen to and make me feel better, um, that just understood it, whether it was written for what I was going through or not, but being able to have music of that sort, a story of that sort, um, you know, really helped me. So I think putting something like this out to the world is just going to help heal and uh, help people, I feel, um, under, really understand themselves and go and help them. And I, I know this will do that. And I'm just really happy that, um, you know, you've, you've created something so spectacular. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. So as we sort of finish up here, what advice uh, would you give to those who are struggling with who they are sexually, uh, their sexual identity, and, you know, are, are younger, you know, maybe they're in a, um, a household that isn't very accepting, or, you know, they're just trying to discover who they are? What advice um, would you give um, to them? Yeah, I, I always say that it's a process of discovering who you are and learning about who you are as a human in general. You know, we're discovering who we are all along the way and it changes. Um, but when it comes to your sexuality, the things that you start to feel that are natural are natural, are beautiful, are sexuality is beautiful. It's natural. And it's, it's, it's a given to all of us, you know, and we shouldn't be afraid of it. Um, and we shouldn't be ashamed by it and to embrace it and to be themselves with courage. You know, us gay people are the strongest because a lot of times we're, we have sensitive hearts and souls and we see the world in a different way. We're the unicorns, you know, and, um, to have that strength and courage within you to keep moving forward and keep discovering yourself. And the thing is, if you're in a household and you're young and it's not safe, you might have to sort of find your chosen family, find your friends you can be honest with, maybe some really trusted family members and be safe about it. The last thing these poor kids want to do is be like, I'm going to come out to my parents who were extreme, you know, evangelical Christians, you know, and to do that and then be put away in a camp because they have no choice because their parents are their shelter and their food supply and, you know, they're put in, in an abusive situation. So to, to be careful and to take care of yourself and to hold out, hold out, you know, and take, take safe, safe refuge in, in, TV and film and music and Lady Gaga and RuPaul and me. <laughs> all of that, all of that. Oh, yeah. Such, such good advice. I, I, I agree with all of that, especially the last part. <laughs> um, where can we keep up with you, learn more about you, learn more about the ladies man? Um, for those watching, um, where can we keep up with you? Uh, I'm on Instagram, just Mort. There it is. Bing. Um, and you can find me Justin Mortaliti on Facebook. Just Mort is also my Twitter. And I am Just Mort is my TikTok. Although I'm not great at TikTok. I'm new, I'm new to it. I'm doing my best. So like, all right. <laughs> You're a step ahead of me. not even on it. I'm so scared. Yeah. <laughs> Mostly Instagram. Instagram's probably the best thing. And you can also follow the Ladies Man Musical on Instagram. That is up on there. And any updates, anything new, I will be posting on there as it happens. And the website is theladiesmanmusical.com, uh, which you can go there as well and check that out. And if you wanna know more about me, it's justamortaliti.com. <laughs> Man, you're on it with the pop-ups. <laughs> yes, that's I, I always love asking people where to follow so I can, can do right, that. Man. Surprise them, yes, yes. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I hope everyone um, will listen to the music, will get to see 
uh, the ladies' man. If somebody out there is watching that's a producer that's um, higher up in the entertainment atmosphere, please, you know, uh, reach out to Justin to these to this to these songs and the story is beautiful. Um, and for those watching, if you want to keep up with me and follow me, you can follow me on uh, Instagram and Twitter at Rye underscore Myers. I'm on Facebook, uh, official Rye Myers. That's new. Um, so I'm still getting used to that. Official Rye Myers. I'm not on TikTok or anything. But uh, And once again, if you love, love what you see, please, again, feel free to um, donate. You can head to ridethenewsguy.com slash donate if you are so inclined. Justin, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me um, and taking time out of your day. I'm really excited to see what comes with this. And this musical, I know, is just going to change lives. And I cannot wait to see the path it takes. Uh, it's exciting to see that it could take several paths, be it a Broadway or a, even in a show form on TV or something. So I'm excited and I'm going to keep following the ladies man and I hope everyone out there will too. Thank you, Rye. Thanks for having me. And to all the listeners, I love you, love yourself and hang in there. Yes. Agreed. Agreed.